Welcome to Honestly Rated, and today we'll be talking about your favorite root tune cowboy, Rattleshake. Rattleshake is a Skylander that comes from Swap Force that is unanimously mostly liked from almost everyone. And today I'm going to take a look at his moveset design wise and actual usage wise to figure out honestly, does he deserve to be that popular? Or are people just really taking a look at damage and just saying, yeah, he's good? But as in tradition, before we go look at the moveset, let's talk about Rattleshake's lore within Skylands. Skylands liked Rattleshake. He was already somewhat of a legend. But the thing that really cemented him and actually made him into a Skylander was the story of the Black Hat Gang. These were a bunch of evil cows that outly just outnumbered Rattleshake in every way. And they wanted to go to Cloudbreak Mountain. And if they didn't, or if Rattleshake didn't send them there, they were going to raid and plunge a local village. And Rattleshake, even though being outnumbered, decided to summon every snake and decided to beat him. And Eon liked that and he became a Skylander and joined the Swap Force Force, you know? So that's pretty cool. Last thing I want to say before we talk about Rattleshake is that if you want to see your Skylander next or potentially in a future Honestly Rated video, leave it down in the comments. I do pick off the comments and I do actually make a list based off of what I see. And if I see more of one kind, I usually pick that next. So leave it down, like other people's comments does help me out a bunch and it will eventually serve you the video that you want to see so yeah also these come out every saturday and if you don't know which ones i already did there is a playlist on my channel with all that said though let's go take a look at rattleshake and see what all the hype's about slithering our way over to the first two moves we have snakes venom and tail sweep these two work extremely good together rattleshake being just a sharpshooter in general, like a very good sharpshooter, I've seen the bullets curve and come back at an enemy. It's very good. You can tell why he's a cowboy. Uh, there's something that tends to happen with these projectile characters is that um, if you have too many enemies at once and you have no way to really deal with a crowd like that, it really hurts an enemy like that. Because even I think projectile characters are probably one of the best characters you can have in specific games like this where you just have to kind of kill things just because you don't have to be right next to them and don't have to risk the damage. And Rattleshake saw that and said, well, I'll do this to literally help me in every situation. And that is Tail Sweep. Tail Sweep is so beautiful. Tail Sweep is a knockback move that, you know, is going to first, one, stun them and launch them farther away to create that space. And also, if you have a place like the arena where there's a lot of open borders at the end, you can just knock them right off and they literally don't matter anymore. And it just fits out Rattleshake's whole game plan within literally the beginning. You start with these two moves. You're level one and you already have some of the best, you know, output out there. And since he's also a swap forcer, he's obviously going to have a good amount of damage. And it's only going to increase from here because he's not max level yet. So these two work extremely well together. And just to know that Tail Sweep is going to get some upgrades in the future. Uh, yeah, he might be absurdly broken. But we'll have to see. But I also want to mention before we go on to the next ones is that I'm going to do the top path and bottom path as two separate things. You can look at the YouTube video and you'll see when one stops and when this begins. Just because I feel like that would make it a little bit more organized than switching back from top to bottom to top, especially when there's going to be a lot of upgrades that are probably going to switch shit around and how stuff works. So it just makes it smoother that way. And then also, I'm not taking any other swappers into consideration. You know, swap forces are meant to be swapped with other characters to make them, you know, either better or just kind of have the fun with it. But since my videos are normally topic onto one character, it wouldn't be fair if I did just start switching it out of nowhere and being like, this works better, this works better, and then making like, you know, the acclaim that he's like a top five character just because I swapped him with this. So, yeah, those two out of the way. Let's go look at the rest of Rattleshake's top path. Next thing about going for the top path first is that we actually get to look at his next move, Deputy Snake, to round off all three moves. Deputy Snake, honestly, has no negatives. There's nothing bad about this. It really rounds off <laughs> Rattleshake's everything game plan. It is a little guy inside of a skull that just shoots and turrets and slows enemies. Slowing is so good. The Rattleshake, like with this, is basically almost untouchable if you just do everything right. His tail, again, knocks back people. Deputy Snake is going to start hurting people in the back that you maybe can't hit. And then he also slows down those enemies so they won't get too close to you and you won't feel overwhelmed and overpressured. And again, Rattleshake himself is a pretty fast character. He can semi-deal with our areas, right? He d I don't think he can kill areas really quickly yet, uh, but he definitely can... He definitely puts the squash on it. He really makes sure the gang is split up and nowhere near as good as it could be. So... Nothing really much else to say about Deputy Snake. I, I fuck with him. He should get a little badge right next to his 
right next to his chest just because he is the true star of the show. The last two for the top primary path are Fistful of Snakes and Spring Loaded Snake. And, you know, upgrading our Venom with the Fistful of Snakes is pretty good. I like it just for the reason that it doesn't take up two slots. It's not like, oh, Deputy Snake now does more damage, and then, oh, your base damage on your thing. No, it, it, it includes both. So, damage upgrade, in these, at least in that sense, especially when we have a limited amount for top and bottom path, fine, we'll give you that one. But, the main thing I want to talk about here is the Spring Load Snake, because it is a hit or miss, and I lean, I literally mean that, literally. Sometimes I see the snake go and hit multiple things at once, and that's pretty good, because it's, it's pretty solid damage. But then sometimes I will shoot it at somebody, there'll be maybe like a crowd, literally around it. And that bitch just goes off into the wind, and hopefully lives a nice life in the wilderness. I, I don't know where it goes. But, other than that, just like a little bit of like a, you know, in a rant or little qualm that I have with it. It's really good. It's pretty nice. And the reason I also find it really nice too is that this snake is a charge move. When you think of a charge move, especially for most Skylander moves, usually it tends to make the character, especially projectile characters, really slow with in turning and moving. And even though you can get hit out of this one, if you get hit while charging up your snake, it won't do anything. You you'll probably be able to launch it off in time. And if you want to, you can really send them bitches out. I think it is a very nice charge move that does solid damage, and if it does then to like go and hit everything else, it's pretty cool. Like, it's just good. It's just good. I don't know what else to tell you. Time for Deputy's Duty, the top top path, which is going to upgrade our snake with nasty surprise and arm to the fangs. Now, since these paths are also smaller, we have one shot. One shot to make a pretty decently new move. And with Deputy Snake, I think they did a pretty nice job. The one thing that is added to Deputy Snake is that he can splooge all over the floor with his Venom and create area damage. Now, you might say, well, isn't that kind of redundant? Rattlesnake can already do that with his tail. He already does pretty nice damage like that. But, honestly, I would say no. Because what would be the fun of not being able to use a move just because you're like, oh, you, know, you can just use the tail. And you just spam tail over and over and over. Which you can do. But when you're looking at this through everything and everything, I want to be able to use all the moves of everybody's and feel like everything can just kind of twist and turn and you can just kind of do nice combos into it and just giving the snake more damage just based off of that makes me just kind of use it a little bit more just be like ha ah, yeah 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 it's just doing more damage in general and i like that i like how they do that and it, it doesn't make it feel like well if i want to clear a crowd i have to just use tail so i just use tail tail tail, tail, tail. no I, if i want to clear a cloud now i could just use deputy snake look at him he's so happy so i like it i'm i'm personally fine with it and then the other move is just to upgrade just to upgrade the splooge of him he, he goons a little bit more now he, he really he already edged for a little longer and now he got a bigger load so yeah the second moves are not going to really be mentioned it's really just going to be the main premise of it just because it's a swapper but i, I won't promise it won't take away from my annual uh, ignitions so on to the bottom path with coil the ammunition being a upgrade to our spring snake with snake bites and this bites what this allows us to do is with our spring loaded snake, poison one enemy that the well our first enemy that we hit, and poison them. What this does is just linger damage and more damage when we hit him with our snake venom, our primary attack. And that's it. I find this to be a little bit more boring than the top one. I really do like just the kind of group attack that, you know, our snake friend does. I also just also kinda of find it weird that like what happens to the snake when it hits multiple people? Like, you see the green, like, go off of it. Does the snake, like, lose his teeth when it bites the first guy? Is it like a bee situation? Like, the stinger falls off type shit? I don't fucking know. A little questionable why they would do that. I, I don't know what the problem here. If you can just do a little bit more damage to everything. And, um, if it just could just, like, have, like, be on a timer. Five seconds. Boom. Like that. I, I don't know. It's a little weird. Uh, I definitely think the top path, for me, is my particular favorite. But nicely enough, I definitely think that both paths are semi-even. I feel like if you pick either war, you're not really losing out on much. It really depends on what you want to do. Do you want to have an attack that does more group damage with your little mounted turret guy? Or would you rather just have a singular, a more central point hit where you can do more damage to big guys like the big sheep or bosses in general? Uh, it's really up to the person, and I like that. That's actually something I really do look for when I look for honestly rated characters. So, good job on that. I, for me personally, I would pick the top one, but I could definitely see the bottom one. It's really up to the person. 
we'll maybe see the bottom. Maybe that'll change my opinion. Maybe there's like a lot more down there that will just kind of affect like, hey, you should probably pick this one just to make them effectively better. We'll see. But we're going on to the bottom bottom now, like the actual bottom part. And we'll save the soul gems for last since they're basically the same. The first thing we're able to buy for the bottom path is going to be Bounce the Bones, which allows us to throw out one of those little Halloween vampire toys that you get in your bucket that you put in your mouth for like a minute and then it hurts your gums out when we swipe our tail. And this is just kind of just like a just damage upgrade, but a damage upgrade that's not super effective. Now you can use it as a projectile. You can use it as a projectile. Uh, I don't know why you would want to though. It doesn't do more damage than your base projectile or just loading up a spring-loaded snake. And the, sometimes it does do more damage though, I would say. And the, the reason that it can do it is that if you do tail swipe an enemy, sometimes I've seen it do multiple hits of damage to a specific enemy. I haven't seen it do it all the time, but it does do it. I don't think it's a bad move. Again, you can use it as just kind of a projectile. I do sometimes just kind of spam it out there. And it's not bad, but maybe the upgrades will make it a little bit more useful or more intentional or, you know, something like that. For right now, well, what we have and what we're dealing with is just a simple projectile that sometimes does more damage. And then for the last two, for the primary path, we have On Brand and Stampede. So, like I said just literally right now, uh, we did actually get an upgrade for our little bone mouth thing, and it now shoots out three. So now I find it a little bit more worth it, just because it's it's like a, it's a more of an area damage from a longer range, and I like that. And that's why exactly I like the snake from the top path because it was area damage from a longer range. So I don't think that it really takes away from Deputy Snake. I still think I find him a little bit better just because he he hits more than just three enemies. But I definitely like this upgrade to shoot out three. It does make it a lot more impactful. But the main thing here that I really want to like praise and mention is this on brand thing. And what on brand lets us do is that when we jump and we continuously hold jump, we will hit the ground with, you know, a brand. I don't know how he gets the skull on the ground. You tell me. And with it, it knocks back enemies. Now, knockback, again, good. It's always one of the best side effects that a move can have just based off of area damage and being able to knock things back. But I think the main thing that should be taken out of here is that this is very unique. I don't know a lot of characters, if any more, that do a jumping specific move. That's super cool. I find that really unique. And it's not bad. I definitely think the way to use it is you have to kind of get used to just holding down jump and then pressing your projectiles with one thumb. It's a little weird. I, I I was trying to get used to it too on here just to make sure I got most of the use of it. But it's just like more added damage at the fact of nothing. Like if you just remember to hold down your jump on while shooting. Because you can shoot. It's not like you have to stop whatever you're doing. You can just jump around, shoot things, and it'll still do the branding on the ground. That's super cool. And I really and I, I really expect that. I, I don't know any other Skylanders that do like that type of like jumping added like ground pound bonus. That is not your primary attack. So, Brutal Shake, that, that you give me, I give you a thumbs up for that one. That's super cool. Next up, we got Bone Herder, the top bottom path with Goliath's Bone Snake and Dancing with the Snakes. And this is just a visibly really cool move. You pull out dead snakes out of the ground. And, you know, I don't know if this is like what they were saying inside of his lore with them like bringing up snakes. I would guess so because he brings the undead. But that's super cool. I really like the visuals of just seeing it go from the ground up. I like it a lot. Uh, it hits things upwards, so it still even creates, like, you can still create spacing with it other than just using your tail. Like, I find that really cool. And with the other added upgrade to it now, if when you walk around, there will be little skulls in the ground that will follow you. That will bring up bone snakes as well. And if you don't actually move, uh, just two little snakes will come beside you. And it does a solid amount of damage. It does 90 damage with the big guy. does a little bit less with the smaller guys. But, yeah, solid move. I don't know what else to say about it. Because there's not a lot to say about it. It doesn't... It's Rattler Snake really had, like, his whole game plan ready set up from the get-go. With basically his primaries and then his two specials. So, it's not like it's adding a lot. But it's just a cool factor. So, let's see what the bottom one does. If anything else different. Then we have a Grave Springer, right? We got Spurred Spring and Graveyard Smash. And honestly, this is kind of just the same. 
this is just like the bone snakes. The reason being is that it does basically the same thing. So you lunge yourself forward, which is, okay, first, different, right? That, that's different. And it creates a knockback sideways. But then the upgrade after gives us gravestones that pop out of the ground that actually do the exact same thing. They pop enemies up, and almost the damage output is basically the same. I would probably say that if you hit the dash or the, the tumble into the gravestones, it probably does more than your big snake guy does. But if you only hit, like, the little gravestones on the side, it probably does less. But at the same time, I bet you the little snakes do probably less than just the gravestones themselves. And the gravestone does area damage, which is always pretty fun. And I'm not saying that the top path couldn't, but it's definitely harder. So, again, I think it's more of a preference thing. I don't think they really do anything too different than each other. I think they basically do the exact same thing. But to be fair... We are talking about the bottom path here. It's not like they really had much of a choice to change of anything. So, I'll give it some leeway. I definitely find them cool. Uh, it's really up to whatever you want. I guess I guess in the same vein as the top path, you kind of have one set that is more focused on a specific enemy. So, one that can kind of kill maybe bigger things uh, faster or just killing one enemy or a set of enemies a little quicker. While the other one is more based on area damage, which maybe won't kill, like, things quick. But it definitely will take out a whole squad eventually. Or at least weaken a squad eventually. They're basically in the same vein. I definitely think this one's just a lot more closer in what you wanted to do. Last up, we have to talk about the both soul gems, raise the snakes, and the snake skinned kid. Man, that is like a tongue twister there. The reason that I'm putting these two together is because they're the same thing. They give us purple skin, which, uh, you know... So uh, it's a little bit more of a grape just for me personally, just because I kind of just like seeing like the base color. But other than that, you still can see it. What it does is that at least the top path will let you have critical hit chances apply more often when the snake is applied. And also lets you take a freebie hit with a guaranteed shield. Now, again, with a guaranteed hit, that is fucking amazing. That's already like a really good thing. Even if it's not in like insanely cool looking, that's super cool. You just get to take a free fucking hit. That's awesome. And the bottom path does the same thing with the, the hit take, but now we're also upgrading his speed, which Rattlesnake doesn't really need a speed upgrade, but I guess if I took it from like a different character's perspective, I guess maybe that could help with other people, but I think it's still good. And it also applies that same hit break, which I believe should let you take two hits with Rattlesnake before they both break at the same time. Or if you take a big hit, it'll usually break it and maybe take you a little bit of damage. It really just depends on the move, it seemed like. So, yeah. These are pretty good soul gems. I like the purple coloring. I, I'm just a, I'm just a person like if I if I own quick draw, I don't know if I would buy the bottom like the last two just because I like to would like to see like the gray blue shine out more than just seeing the purple if I don't get hit. But that's more of a personal gripe. I'm not gonna add that to the fucking problem list, which I'm not gonna lie, we don't really get a lot. So let's go on to the rating. Let me go take a look at everything and finally assess it. So. After taking a look at Rattlesnake and, you know, all the bones that he's collected and all the snakes that he has up his ass or in his pocket, I don't know where he puts them all, um, I'm ready to rate Rattleshake. And the final assessment that I came to was that Rattleshake deserves a 5 out of 5. He deserves his rating. He deserves all the praise he gets because he is a fucking beautifully fantastic character. <laughs> I can't lie to you. Hey, give him a round of applause. He's really fun. Um, I like how a lot of his moves do actually go into each other. I find that I use basically everything. I use his charges. I use Deputy Snake. I use his basic attack. I use his jump attack, which like something like, it's somewhat forgettable. But like if when you remember it and you just kind of like input it into like his jump, that's pretty cool. Just more damage up there. It's literally a jump upgrade. I'd never really seen any of those for Skylanders, and I just I like him a lot. It's, it's, like I like him because of it. Uh, I'm really glad that I did this because Rattleshake was one of my favorite characters back in the day. I kind of stopped. I didn't really, I didn't really care for him. But now I see why a lot of people still like him now, because he is just good. He is just fun. The only thing that I could say was semi-negative about the guy was just like I find his paths a little too repetitive. But at the same time, his paths are shortened just because of the top and bottom. And I think what they were able to do was fair enough. Like I, I like it a lot. I don't think they really could have got any much better from it. And I really feel like it was able to shine everything to him, to projectiles, to really make you ever use everything. It was really cool. But, yeah, 5 out of 5. Nice job, Rattlesnake. You're the second one to ever reach that status. And I can't wait to find the other ones. You know, we got one from Imaginators. We got one from Swap Force. We got just Trap Team Giants, Spyros. 
I bet you they're there. I just don't know them yet. So, leave it down in the comments. Who do you want to see me rate next? Doesn't matter who it is. I got basically every single Skylander except for variants and Series 2s, which I'll get those to make sure I can rate them properly. But it means a lot for you guys to stick all the way to the end. If you want to make sure that I didn't really do one of yours that you might want to see now, go check out the playlist. I promise you it's all updated to all the new ones. And, yeah. Thank you all for watching the end. Leave it down in the comments. And I hope to see you next Saturday for another Honestly Rated, which is whatever you guys pick. So, see ya.